What's up everybody? Don Maguccioni here. We're doing another part in our series on stretching and mobility. So this is going to be the last one specifically on stretching for a little while, then we're going to change gears a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to stretch your quads and your calves. And then we're going to talk about a little bit of uh, overarching principles for stretching that you can apply to any parts of the series. Um, really just to help you keep your focus on what you're trying to accomplish with any stretching or mobility. So quads, quadriceps, front of your thighs. Want to make sure we have some ways to stretch those. And calf muscles back here. So we're going to talk about the difference between sort of the upper and the lower aspect of your calves and how to hit those a little bit differently with stretches. Um, first with quads. Easiest one, really, um, is the standing quad stretch. So I think we talked about this previously with the hamstrings. Don't make stretching a balancing drill. So if you can stretch okay and your balance is pretty solid, that's great. But if we're finding a little bit of this number going on, the wall is your friend, chair, whatever you got nearby, just make sure you're not struggling to balance. So this is a pretty standard one, you know, hold, relax, shake it out. So some common pitfalls with the quad stretch, you know, it, it hurts my knee, I'm not feeling a stretch in my quad. What you want to think about when you're doing this is not necessarily pulling your knee into your butt. That's where you might get a little bit of that discomfort in your knee. What you want to be able to do is keep a solid distance like this, so you're actually getting a little stretch in that quad. And then when you want to increase it, you pull your leg back. So rather than pulling your knee to your butt, pulling away like that. Another way you can accomplish the same thing with that stretch um, and, and maybe have some different angles for yourself as you can lay down on your side. So if I'm on the floor right now, you know, same kind of concept, and you don't have to worry about the balance aspect of it at all. If it's too challenging even to use the wall, there's another way you can do it. Calves. So same kind of thing. Wall is your friend here. And what you're going to do is come on back. So I'm stretching upper part of my calf here. Want your knee to be completely straight and use the wall use your front leg to leverage into that and feel a nice stretch in the back you can relax it's always important to shake it out every once in a while and relax so again talking about the difference between the upper part of your calf here and then the bottom here near your Achilles tendon, that can be accomplished by taking your knee and bending it. So instead of straight here, we're going to go bend. And you should feel that stretch right down this aspect here, as opposed to up higher. So those are some ways that you can stretch your quads and your calves. And what I wanted to talk about a little bit was some overarching principles of stretching that we've really covered in all the different stretches, um, the different segments, whether it be hamstrings, hips, upper body, quads, and calves. What you want to do is think about what you're trying to accomplish. So I mentioned like, okay, if I'm trying to stretch my quads, I want to use my leverage in a way so that I am feeling a comfortable stretch in that muscle group. Uh, but not any sort of tension or pain in another part of my body, such as my knee, for the quad stretch. So how do we accomplish that? So you've seen throughout the series, we've used a series of items to help create leverage, make space, and really assist us in the stretch. So here I'm talking about the wall. So that's something that you're using as a, as a helping hand, really, for your stretch. So I'm using the wall to help with my balance. And I'm using my hand so that I can relax this muscle group, but use something else as leverage to accomplish my goal. Same thing with the wall for the calf stretch. 
I'm using the wall and I'm using my own body weight to help assist and stretch that area. We've brought out the belt quite a few times, so hamstring stretches, upper body stretches. Um, the straddle stretch is another example of using leverage, so you're using your own body weight um, to help accomplish what you're trying to do, which is stretch groin, stretch hamstrings. So effective stretching is always going to involve some sort of assistance or leverage. So you want to think about what that's going to be for you, um, like depending on what the, what the stretch is and what you're trying to accomplish. But you want to be able to relax the group of muscles that you're trying to stretch. And usually that involves, okay, I've relaxed this muscle group. I need to, to have some outside assistance, whether that be a wall, whether that be a belt, whether it be my body weight to help me apply that stretch effectively. So just some principles to think about, making sure that you know what you're trying to accomplish, you know the group of muscles you're trying to stretch, and that you're doing an inventory and making sure that you're not creating some sort of tension or pain in another area by trying to accomplish that. So there are ways that you can use assistance to have leverage and do a stretch but not create pain. So for me, um, no pain when I use the wall, when I use my wrist here, and that's going to be effective for me to do stretching. So hope you enjoyed this video. What we're going to do is we're going to shift gears next time. We're going to talk more about myofascial release. So we'll go through the whole kinetic chain again like we did for stretching and talk about um, in addition to stretching, here's an aspect that you can do to help with body maintenance, mobility, um, that's myofascial release. So it's things like foam rollers um, and other techniques to help your muscles relieve some of the tension. Stretching on its own is, is very helpful, it's great, but on its own it doesn't really accomplish everything we're trying to do with performance and with helping relieve tension that builds up from day-to-day -day activity or training. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give me a like on Facebook. Message me with any comments, questions, feedback. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.